hi guys this is tayo again with another video so today we are going to be um painting this particular portrait but before we begin um shout out to clifford art for helping me with the sketch so i wanted to do more of collaborations this year so i even posted on my ig that whoever has a sketch that would be nice for me to paint should dm me the sketch so that we can collaborate so i want to do more of collaboration this year so this sketch was um um sketched by clifford arts you can follow him on instagram he is good at sketching so so we are going to be picking up our color palettes from the face so around this area you can get your base color so you make sure you create a new layer for that so you place the piece color then you go again and pick up the darkest parts of the photo around the eye bag then you place it down on a new layer as well um, then you can still go back again and pick up uh, the brightest parts of the photo which is our highlights then the next thing you're going to be doing is picking up the color palette for the lip so you can pick up the lower lip and the upper lip then you set it aside as well so after setting these color palettes aside you can now decide to fill up your base color make sure you create a new layer then you can use you can use the fill tool to automatically fill up the layer you can just use your fill tool make sure the layer button is turned on then it can automatically detect the layer then you fill it up using the bucket tool the fill bucket tool so it's easier for you to save time instead of applying the color manually using your brush but there are insufficiency in the filling so you can just um, fill it up manually those species that those species that are not yet filled you can just fill them up using your brush so after doing that you you fill up um, the base color for the lip and also for the eyes it's advisable that when you are filling up the lip it should be on a different layer so that you can easily adjust the colors you can easily adjust and correct whatever mistake you've done so make sure you create a separate layer for the lips for the eyes and all the parts of the, the portraits that are having different colors Before you paint a portrait or before you start painting, you need to understand one thing which is where the shadows and the highlights are. So the shadows are the darkest parts of the photo and the highlights um, are the brightest parts of the photo. So for you to be able to easily um, identify all these things is for you to turn the image into a black and white so that you can easily see where the shadows are so as you can see this is where the shadow on this picture is um all the all the parts that i cycled with a red color um it's, it's signifying the area in which the shadows are located so all the area I cycled with a red color um, I'm signifying that there is a shadow 
over there so yes so make sure you just take note that this area are uh, containing shadows so this area containing shadows then i'm going to be identifying the highlights the area in which there is there are highlights i might not identify the whole areas in which there is there are shadows but yes you can continue to identify them yourself i'm just giving you ideas on where they are located and the obvious parts obvious parts that are located just to give you an open eye just to open your eyes to seeing them because one of the steps of for you to be able to paint effectively is for you to be able to identify those areas that are containing the shadows and the highlights so yes i think i'm done identifying those major and minor parts um although i'm not i'm not done identifying all on all of them on the reference but yes you have an idea at least you have an idea on where to start and where to place your highlights and shadows so the next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be um, starting off with our our painting so you just need to start layering um you just need to start layering your um colors but before then you need to select your soft airbrush because i use soft airbrush to paint then there's a new method this is not really a new method though there's a method i don't know whether i've done it before on this channel that's why i'm saying is a new method so but there's a way you can actually um easily paint an area without distracting the other side so i'm going to be showing you how to use your selective um tool to paint selective tool and your airbrush to paint so the first thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking your reference close to your the um, at the top of the layer in which you are going to be painting so that you can go back and forth with um you, you, are, you can switch at any time to see where the shadows are on the reference then you go to paint them on a separate layer so yes i've selected my color when i've selected my dark color which is the shadows so the next thing i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be using my selective tool i'm going to be using my selective tool and i'm going to be selecting the the corner of the eye i'm going to be selecting it a loom the only place i want these shadows to be affected is the corner of the eye so i'm going to be selecting my selective tool so i'm going to be using my selective tool to select the corner of the eyes um, i'm going to be using the the lasso tool the lasso tool um as you can see i'm dragging it around the corner just the parts just make sure you up, just drag it in the part in which you want the painting or your shading to be affected so just place it in the part that you want the shading to be affected so after you select it then you can start applying your painting using your hard airbrush or soft airbrush it really depends on um, the one you prefer but is the same thing you just need to like adjust the opacity and you're good to go whenever you are painting using the airbrush make sure the reference is at the top of your painting layer or your shading layer make sure you can be you can easily navigate from the reference to your painting layer just make sure it's at the top of the shading layer so you can check the area or the portion in which you want to paint or you want to shade then you can go back to the layer and shade it just check the reference you can be going back and forth to see the area in which you need to shade 
then you go back and shade it just as simple as that so you can reduce the size of your soft airbrush as well and you can increase the size it really depends on what you want to achieve so just make sure you take it slow don't rush so that you can get a good result you can reduce the your the size of your airbrush to shade some selected portion So if you want to give more details around the eye bag, um, make sure you reduce the, the size, you reduce the size and also increase the opacity. As you can see, the eye bag is having more opacity and is having more um, some lines around it. So make sure you reduce the size and you increase the opacity so as to achieve that line and those details. So you are just practically going to be drawing them. You are going to be drawing them yourself. So yeah, I'm already giving the eyes some details. So make sure before you give details like this, make sure you've laid down some um, rough, some rough shadows on on the area first before you give its details. So. Um, you can still go to the top of the eye and give it a detail as well. You can see all the details on the reference. Just make sure you you watch the reference closely and see those things that you need to apply. Just make sure you keep on reducing and increasing the, the size and opacity so as to achieve that um, similar details on the reference. So you can use your eraser to clean up some sites that you think is too um, thick or maybe you've mistakenly shaded outside the area you want to shade. Then after cleaning with your eraser, you can decide to remove the selective, you can decide to remove the selective area and then you can use your um, hair brush you can also use a smudge brush because the hair brush and the smudge brush is almost the, it's almost doing the same thing so you can reduce the size to a good comfortable size that you can use to be smudging you can be dragging those shadows that you've placed and you've laid down you just drag it towards the direction you can see I'm dragging it towards the direction of the sh shadows so it gives you some details and lines on your shading it doesn't give you like more of a um, just flat shadows it gives you like um, texture it gives you texture on the painting so it's a really nice way to to paint as well you can use your smudge brush too to drag the colors you can use it to drag the colors so i'm going to be using the hairbrush all through this painting process you can do well to use it as well and try it out you can it helps a lot for dragging colors and smudging colors all together so i'm going to be painting the other side of the eye without selecting using a selective tool um, but it's still going to turn out the same. So yes, it's just I'm just showing you Possibilities. I, I'm just showing you other means on how to 
shade it can it may work for you uh, this one might work for you as well so i'm just giving you more options to work with so as you can see i'm not giving i'm not giving the the area the eye any details yet i'm just laying down the 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 colors i'm just laying down the shadows after you've laid down the shadows you can now decide to start adding details if not you are going to screw up everything so just make sure you uh, place down those shadows first before you start giving the eyes details and mind you we are only painting the shadows we are not painting it all together with the highlights so we are taking it one step at a time so just keep in mind so after you are, i'm done with the other eye i'm going to be placing shadows like random shadows just to like lay a foundation because i always tell you that don't go into details first you you must just you just have to like lay down um the foundation some rough shadows here and there you can just place them where they are i've already showed i've already shown you where they are located so you just need to increase the brush your brush size your soft airbrush or hard airbrush they just increase the size and reduce the opacity and please do shadows where where they are located don't go into details just place them where they are located make sure you zoom out and check what you're doing make sure you turn on the reference layer and check what you're doing and where they are before applying the shadow so this is what i'm going to be doing right now so i'm just going to be placing the shadows randomly all over the reference before i start diving into details
so the next thing we are going to be painting is the nose so for you to be able to adequately paint the nose without any issue you need to understand form form and how um three the three dimensional shapes uh three dimensional um dimensional uh, space works so you just need to know the form and where the shadows are expected to lie and you just need to know how to break down the shadows into different shapes so i've done a separate videos on how to draw a nose and i've broken down um some i've broken down the shadows into simple shapes i've done a lot of explanation regarding to drawing of nose so you can go check it out in my previous videos so you just need to break down those shadows into simple shapes so that you can be able to replicate them easily so if you um, start looking at the, the shadows um just like a random um color or let's just just say just like a random um, stuff it's going to be easy, um, harder for you it's going to be harder for you to actually replicate but if you um have a 3d uh, 3d mindset and you visualize all the ships um to be 3d it's going to be easier for you to replicate those ships um per se you can you can make sh you can replicate those shadows as shapes you can easily replicate them as shapes and yes and again another tip of um, painting is you can be using your smudge brush to drag the colors and make sure the colors are blended well and you, you can also use your hairbrush or your smudge brush to actually give the painting a texture so this texture actually makes the painting more alive and yes since we are using airbrush it it gives those strokes that those brush strokes that um, an airbrush doesn't give so yes um just make sure you think in three dimension like just make sure you, you think in 3d so that whenever you are shading you know that yes it's expected that when the light is coming from the left um shadows are going to be basing at the right so just make sure you know how um how light works how 3d works and ambient inclusion and all those things i've done a lot of videos regarding to shadows highlights and all those things shading and all that so you can just go through my videos and watch them and i guarantee you are going to um, really improve in your shading so just keep on watching the video and see how i place them and how i blend them all together
so we are done placing the um, shadows where they are expected to be on the portrait then the next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be painting or shading the lip since we are done with the rest of the face we are going to be shading the lip so a lot of people have been requesting tutorials regarding to lip um, lip painting i'm still going to do a separate video regarding to that but here is a tip for that so the i would really recommend you to select the uh, particular base color for the lip make sure you have laid down a separate base color for the lip so that you can easily um, change color or do whatever ad adjustments you want to do so after making a separate layer for that and make sure your color palettes are set aside then you create a new layer for your shading then make sure the reference photo is at the top so that you can easily switch back and forth to see your mistakes um yes you can just place it at the top of your shading layer so that you can be going back and forth to see where the shadows are located then i would also recommend beginners that are finding it hard to actually place the shadows where they are expected to be to reduce the opacity just reduce the opacity of the reference so that you can easily trace the shadows make sure you reduce the opacity of your airbrush as well so that you can easily replicate the shadows and yes so don't apply too much uh, colors don't um, apply too much dark shadows on the lip because it's expected that the lower lip most especially is lighter so make sure you apply little um, shadows on the lower lip but uh, this is not really a problem because it's it's going to it's, 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 it can be easily it can be easily adjustable so you can easily adjust it because you are doing the whole project on separate layers so yes so um according to the lip you need to think uh you need to think in 3d just knowing the three-dimensional parts of the lip the part is, um, is, seg is separated into different um, shapes and different uh, dimension so you can see that there is there is a separate video i've done regarding to breaking down of lips and knowing how to shade them and knowing the the how to break them into shapes and knowing how to easily sketch them i've done lots of video regarding different parts of the face just do well to go through my videos and watch them but i placed my shadow on the lip then i used the hairbrush to be dragging it so that it will give me those lines those texture on the lip but I, I I later found out that it's not going to turn out well the way I wanted it to be. So then what I did was I made sure I reduced my airbrush um, size. I reduced the airbrush size. Then I used uh, the airbrush to sketch the those lines and those te texture one after the other those lines those texture those texture on the on the lip i make sure i draw them i make sure i paint them separately I, I paint them one after the other using my airbrush so you can increase opacity and start drawing those lines on the lip so that you can get a more realistic look so yeah just stick around and see what i will do regarding to the lip just make sure you stick around and watch it closely
so after we are done with the lip um the next thing we are going to be doing is um we are going to be painting the eyes we are going to be painting the shadows of the eye it's quite simple um we are still going to be doing the same step i did for the lip just select the flat colors select the base color then create a new layer at the top then look for the reference and bring it closer and so that you can be um going back and forth and be seeing the shadows and replicating what you want to paint so it's just quite easier and um, it's just the same way i did the lip so you just select the color for the eye sometimes you the colors the color of the eye is not really um white so i would really recommend you to pick the color for you to be able to get a realistic look so i'm going with this kind of color i'm going with this particular color but sometimes you can easily uh, modify the color because um, because it looks nice sometimes when you modify them because the original color might look dull so i'm just replicating the shadows and placing them where the eye lo are located so yeah that's all about it the same i'm still going to be doing the same thing um, for the other side of the eye eyeball
so we are going to be adding highlights to the painting so sorry i wasn't able to record um my highlighting parts because i actually thought i was recording but i never knew it wasn't recording so um you guys should check my highlighting tutorial i've done tutorials regarding to highlights so yes so i'm going to pretty much explain how i'm going to highlight the lip so you can use that same idea to highlight the face so as you can see the lip is a combination of this shadow shadows midtones and highlights so the we have already laid down the midtone and the shadows all we need to do is we are going to be imputing the highlights and the highlights are mostly found in between the shadows and the midtone so it's going to be centered in the middle of the shadows and the midtone so just make sure you check carefully just make sure you turn on your your reference keep on turning on your reference and be checking then you apply the color you check and you apply the highlights you check and apply the highlights i would recommend you to start with a, a highlight that is somehow colored and somehow pinkish because um if you use a whitish color you might not be able to get it but i, I recommend you to just start off with a lighter pink color then you can later now add a white color on it just to like give it more highlights so just start off with a lighter color of the uh, of of the lip then you can add more highlights using the white color So the next thing we are going to be doing is finishing touches so i'm going to be showing you how to add blush to your paintings how to add texture and all those good stuff so the first thing you're going to be doing is creating a new layer or you can just decide to use a layer that doesn't have a lot of um, things on so i'm going to be using probably my darker shadow layer um, but before i add texture i'm going to be adding my um I'm going to be adding my blush which is going to be on my um, flat color or middle tone layer so just go to your base color layer and um, select a pinkish color then select your airbrush then apply it around the cheek make sure the um, make sure your your layer is locked so that when you're applying it is going to be applied only on that base color so as you can see i'm applying the blush uh, pinkish color i'm also applying it at the eyebrow and around the eyes because according to the reference the lady is having like a, an eyeshadow a reddish eyeshadow so it can also work for that so as you can see it's, it's making the drawing it's making the painting look more alive so this is another tip you can um used to make your paintings pop up so adding red color makes the painting more alive and have more color combinations and make it looks realistic so you can keep on adding more you can keep on adding more reddish colors just to make it more don't don't overdo it though just make sure you apply it where necessary and and apply it 
at a minimum amount so that it, it will not be too much then after you're done with that you can decide to add texture so i'm going to be using my darker um, color layer for that so i'm going to be using my darker color layer then i'm going to be selecting as you can see a darker shade darker shadows are very important and makes the drawing pop up well so it gives it more three-dimensional shape um so i'm going to be selecting the darker tone i'm going to be selecting the darker tone i'm going to be using it for this acne or let's just say um texture this half face texture this mole on her face i'm going to be replicating it using this my pen my fine line pen but I feel, I feel like it's not giving me what i want so i'm going to be selecting probably a thicker pen that is going to um achieve what i'm going to uh, what i want to, is going to do what i want to achieve so yes this is pretty much all about adding moves then if you want to add more texture like make it um look like it has um skin texture or let's just say um a skin pores so if you want it to look like she uh, you've added a skin pores or texture on the the painting you can just go to your brushes go to your brushes and then look for a brush called um look for a brush called dotted toothbrush if you are you've been watching my tutorials i use this brush a lot for adding texture so you can just reduce the opacity reduce the size of the dotted to brush then apply it on a separate layer make sure you apply it all over the face and all over the body Then you can use a soft light blend mode to apply uh, on the layer so that it will look more like a texture. Um, if you have any question, do well to drop it down below. I guess I'm done with uh, this tutorial. Do well to subscribe and if you are new to this channel, welcome to this family. I drop tutorials every month and um, every two weeks. So yes if this tutorial was helpful do well to let me know in the comment section follow me on all platforms and i'm, and I'm on instagram twitter and facebook um yeah i'll see you in my next video peace